After five days of weather delays, Richard and Ashley finally escape Eagle Plains and make it to the town of Inuvik. Now, just 150 kilometers away from the end of their journey north, they discover the last section of road is also closed due to weather. Again, they must wait. X Overland Solo Series is presented by General Tire and the Grabber ATX, the official tire of the Arctic Series, available at TireRack.com. And in association with Patriot Campers and Peacor Systems. Okay, so since the road to Tuck is closed, we're going to have another adventure and drive the ice roads to Klavik today. Finding good stuff? Wow! Nachos, nacho chips, salsa. Ever wonder what a far north grocery store is like? Well, it's packed with surprises. Uh, let's get some uh, snowmobile, how about? <laughs> Do you see the snowmobiles? Yes. Okay, let's go. Awesome. When you get an opportunity to drive straight off a boat ramp, you take it. A Klavik? Yes. Let's roll out. Roll out. Fortunately for Richard and Ashley, it currently doubles as the ice road on ramp. This ice road receives an average of 50 brave travelers on a daily basis. This is ice. We should probably go so we don't get run over, but are you going to pull up the skates or what? It is unnerving driving a heavy vehicle out onto the floating slabs of ice. After asking around for reassurance, the only advice they receive from the locals is, when you hear the ice crack, keep your foot on the gas. What are we gonna do if we fall in? We use Fire Chief Mike's knife and recovery tool to smash out the windows and get the heck out of here. Although it is frigid, winter really is a special time to visit the far north. During these three to five months of dark Arctic cold, these frozen rivers and lakes form an ice road network totaling almost 2,000 kilometers, allowing you to drive to communities that spend the majority of the year completely isolated. And in the summer, you'll only access them by airplane, helicopter, or boat. The ATX tire continues to be the best choice for this trip, especially with the added studs. Acceleration, turning, and brake action is dramatically improved and is paying off right here. Please note the amount of water that we're on right now. The Mackenzie River Delta. Here's your minimum ice thickness safety chart. Ice just has to be 18 inches thick with fish under it, as per the diagram, <laughs> for us to be safe, safe to drive on it. Richard and Ashley are following this ice road to the remote village of Aklavik. Aklavik was once considered the transportation, commercial, and administrative capital of the Western Arctic. Due to its inaccessibility and remoteness, it was relocated to Inuvik in 1958. Most residents complied with the move to Inuvik. However, many stayed, living up to their motto, never say die. But one man took this a little too far. It is an epic story that began with the shooting of an RCMP officer in 1931. It happened at the trapper's cabin located just outside the hamlet of Aklavik to become the most incredible manhunt of the 20th century. With only the clothes on his back to protect him from the brutal winter and temperatures of minus 60 degrees Celsius, the mysterious trapper outwitted and outgunned the legendary RCMP force and their posse of Aboriginal special constables for seven long weeks. Broadcasted by radio, live from the scene, it was the biggest news story of the day. From Anchorage to Miami, people from across the continent tuned in to the hourly updates from high in the Canadian Arctic. 
amidst howling huskies, dangerous trails, and frozen nights, through some of the harshest terrain in the world, the trapper impossibly kept the posse at bay and the public glued to their radios. In the end, with the superior tracking abilities of the posse of Aboriginal Special Constables and the assistance of aircraft piloted by Watt May, the trapper went down in a hail of bullets on the Eagle River on February 17, 1932. The Giordanos are rolling away from here with a great memory. They can say that they have driven the frozen river to Aklavik and found where the mad trapper eluded the law. That's a great story, if you ask me. All you have to do is do what they did and say yes. A quick check of road conditions reveals the road to Tuck is still closed. So they meet up with their new friend Juan, who offers to take them out a snowmobiling run. I'll be a little drinky if I can't, I'll show you. Hop in. This is your accelerator. Okay. If you hit this button, it will turn off. Full hard. A quick lesson on sleds, and they're up and running. There you go. Whoa! On the pack trail, yeah. it will, if you turn, it will mostly steer. Okay. On the fresh snow, that is not going to do much. You have to pull all your way down. So even if you like pull this leg in the other side as well and pull sometimes, what? it helps. Okay. Did I just push it and it'll go? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, keep going. It needs to drive up. Are you ready? <laughs> After a few quick laps, Ashley seems to have the hang of it. Very limited. You can. I've been here for 10 years, I'm not very skilled, so don't worry. Just like vehicles, snowmobiles or snow machines as those in the north call them, are really fun until they get stuck. Then they're just a whole lot of work. Oh no. On the... There. Alright, so we're gonna lift and try to push it up. Okay. One, two, three. Okay. One more of those. Okay. One, two, three. There you go. Okay, now put only your weight on that side, because that's where the snow is. I could not do it. Okay. Now you did it once. Yeah. You failed, so 50-50. <laughs> Tiebreaker. Tiebreaker? Yeah, yeah, go again. Okay. Worst case scenario, we'll get all on statue. <laughs> One more time. A 
goes to show that wherever you are in the world, people want to share their lives and experiences with others. This is truly one of the best aspects of overland travel. Done. I felt really good. Yeah. Sweaty now. Oh, yeah. That's when you take one layer and go again? Yeah. <laughs> On the way back to Inuvik, Richard and Ashley bump into an old friend of ours. Expedition Overland met Kylik on the first big trip back in 2013. Guys like Kylik are few and far between. He is truly a special guy with a passion for his people and land. I'm uh, Kyle Kasun Taylor. I run a company called Tundra North Tours here in Anubik. And this is our village. This is uh, our uh, Igloo Aurora village that we build every year. And we bring people out here to experience like a new culture, sleep in an igloo, eat the food, hear stories, just kind of interact, ice fish, snowmobile, play with the dogs, and just kind of uh, get away from uh, the city. It's really different than what most people experience in their lifetime. Being able to say they slept in an igloo and watch the aurora and, you know, eat the different types of food is, is a big deal for a lot of people. So, and it's great for us too, because then we get to eat that food and we get to hang out out here and get paid to build igloos and it's a good job. Yeah. This is the first time in history that I know of where a younger generation is teaching an older generation mm -hmm. about like who we were and like the, the skills. The knowledge has been like, there was like a really definitive stop, like, colonization and residential schools and like my you know we weren't allowed to speak our language we weren't allowed to do any of this stuff so like my mom never built an igloo my uncle never built an igloo and now they can come out here and spend time in one and we could show them how to do that mm -hmm. and they're teaching us obviously the skills that they still retained mm -hmm. even though they went to residential school they're teaching us that and that part of the history but a lot of things have been like a race and but luckily it happened at a time when there were people writing books and like kind of mm. documenting it we built this igloo one time and there were elders in there that were crying because they hadn't been in an igloo since they were born in one like 80 years ago most people kind of walk away from these experiences that we've created which have always existed we've mm. just made them accessible i guess mm. you know either they are fall in love with winter they used to hate winter and now they think it's super fun and they're out snowshoeing and like Aww. oh you made winter fun like i didn't know it could be so neat to be oh. In the winter, like yeah. most people, some of our clients say winter was always just something to survive. Oh. It was like, oh, just get through the winter. And then now they're like, oh man, like I'm going snowshoeing and I rented a snowmobile. And like they're, they're more like wanting to be in the environment, even mm -hmm. when it's harsh. Mm -hmm. um, because that's the most exciting time. Like, I don't know, when there's a storm, that's the best time to go outside. Like that's when you feel <laughs> alive, right? So that's what we're trying to do is like, we just want to be able to show people like, not only what it used to be like, but the beauty of what it used to be like. As Overlanders, we strive to bring good to the communities that we visit. And frankly, we seldom leave without the communities deeply impacting us as well. After a big day out, the Giordanos head back to Juan's house to check the road conditions before they make their way up to Tuck. They quickly realize they may be enjoying Juan's hospitality longer than expected. All right, well, thank you very much. That's interesting, I've seen beer there. Okay, okay, perfect, thank, thank you. Welcome to our new home, Anubik. <laughs> also known as Juan's house. <laughs> oh boy. Oh boy. We are going dog sledding. Ash's got the navigation, <laughs> Ash's got the snacks. I don't know why the orange foods are giving me a little pick-me-up with all the white snow and the winter scapes. It's the contrast. Maybe it's the vitamin C. Maybe we need to get some macaroni and cheese next. Like an Arctic chalet if I've ever seen one. Apparently they're itching to go for a run. Yeah. 
For a long time, dog sledding was the only means of travel through the Arctic winter landscapes, and thus is deeply embedded in the culture. Richard and Ashley jump at the opportunity to turn their downtime into an experience they won't forget. If you have ever wondered what it takes to run a dog sled, here is your crash course. So, the first thing to remember is that you need to hold on. Like, hold on. If you're falling off, go down with the ship. Just hang on to your sled and go down. The command chi is to turn right. The command cha is to turn left. Whenever you go down a hill, you're going to want to use your drag pad so the sled doesn't catch up to the dogs. Okay? Okay? I guess we're ready to go have some fun. <laughs> Yes. Yes. What? What? Nice to meet you guys. <laughs> They're gonna take me for a ride. I can tell already. All right. Let's see what happens. And we're out. What is this? Hey. Listening to me. Oh no! Cha! 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 You got it. There we go. Good dogs. She's down. Oh, where are you going, my love? You thought you had a faster team. How's it going over here? Good. How's your dog sledding experience? Uh, very exciting. Um, it's a good workout. I am sweating. I did a superwoman a few times. And I'm not a natural at this. So, <laughs> I think it's beautiful. I've mostly been trying not to fly off of my sled. So. Richard and Ashley are grateful for these rich experiences in the Canadian Arctic, but the anticipation to reach Tuck is growing. So join us next time for the thrilling conclusion and season finale of the Arctic Solo Series. <laughs>